Hi YouTube, it's Melissa. I'm here today to show you how I store my dies. And so in the beginning, um, I'm gonna start off by saying that I'll link a video in the description box of my RASCOG and how I use it to store my dies and my big shot and that organization system that I had set up like six months or a year ago. And just how as of recently, it wasn't really working for me, for me to utilize everything in my stash. And I am all about using everything that I have to its fullest potential. And I don't feel like I was getting that out of that. So I changed it up. And since I don't have a decent tripod, I'm actually gonna stop the video so I can bring my stuff over to my desk here and show you a really good in-depth and how this better system is working for me. Okay. Okay, so before I do the in-depth, I'll do a quick overview of kind of what I have where, and then I will pull these out and show you more. So on the top here is where I keep my Big Shot, and I have this tray, which again, there is a video regarding this tray and where I got it and what I keep in it. I'll link it in the description box below. But currently, I have my small Big Shot plates. I have this brush tool, which I use a lot for my intricate dies. On the side here, I keep my um, die cutter and like a pokey tool. And then these are like dot, like for filing the sharp edges off the dies. So that's in there and a pair of scissors for paper and whatnot. And then down below here, I keep this box of dies, which I'll go through. There's a box here, a box in the back. And then on this shelf, this is where my big Z, like big die cuts are. This is a smaller box. There's another box there and then some bigger dies. Okay, so I'll start with this shelf. I'll pull it out and then show you what I've done. Okay, so here we go. I've got that big box. This box is just from Target. It's one of the like fabric sturdy box though that's got a nice handle so I can pull it out from my Rascog tray. Um, I went ahead uh, when I made this system and took some cardboard and just my typewriter and did this is a die from Tim Holtz and just did uh, some labels. Now standalone is dies that uh, could just cut as is like there's some project life in here. These are all Ziploc bags that I've purchased from Hobby Lobby. I've bought the magnetic sheets and glued them onto cardboard. The magnetic sheets are from Home Depot. They're the vent covers and then just used um, labels. So like these Project Life dies. And then you go into this one says shapes and that would be like circles, squares, all kinds of those types of elements, tags, <clears throat> excuse me, is the next one. And there's not very many of those, but you know, for sure, you guys have seen these if you've watched any of my videos. So then I have edgelets next, and edgelets are dies such as these, like the Lawn Fawn Hillsides, my cloud edgelets, those types of things. Mama Elephant, the edgelet words would be next, and those are dies that look like this. And then next, this section is where I've made the most changes. So this is actually words. And I used to keep words separated, but decided I'm a very thematic person. That's how my brain works. I work um, the best and most creatively according to th theme when I'm filing things and whatnot. If you've ever seen how I store stuff, it's all according to what it is, not color, um, but like travel and school and that type of stuff. So you'll see that ex is exactly how I decided to conform this system for me. So before I did not have, I'll just move this aside. I did not have these where I could see what they were. Before I just had something like this and now this was filed in this box but if I'm being honest if I were to flip through this quickly I don't know what this says 
Um, I mean, I guess I could look at these, but it's not very conducive for me. And I had dies in different places, if they were small dies, small word dies. So I decided to consolidate um, and, you know, make it work better for me. So I went and cut each of these word dies and glued them onto the backing sheet of this. So now when I'm flipping through, not only can I read the words very easily, but I know exactly what's on this panel in this bag. And I've done that for this one here, this one. And now none of these have any sort of, like they don't conform to like all, um, you know, a specific holiday or, um, you know, celebration. This was all just word dies that I wanted to get on and, you know, be able to read and see very easily. So I went and did that. The other thing I did is I made a couple of these black cardstock inserts. Now notice there's no dies here. This is just a couple pieces of cardstock glued together for stability. Well, I went through my box and in a couple of areas, let's say standalone, the very first area, you will notice that I pulled out originally these two Project Life Technique Tuesday dies and there's three words in here. Well, do you think my little brain was helping me remember these three words when I was working on projects? No. So I cut them out and put them on here. Same with this. This is a Stampin' Up! It's called Sunshine Wishes. And you'll see this has a flower, a butterfly, a heart, and some words. Now, you know, I could have, I guess, put on the back side that like I've done here, but with these other elements like the flower and the heart and such, I decided to die cut the whole bit and put it where it needs to go. So that's where these four words came in. And I love that this is um, on here because now I know exactly, I mean, I will say that I know exactly where this is from. Like. I'm pretty good with my product, and so I know, just looking at this, oh, I know exactly where that's from. Um, this Love This was from, hold on, one, no, it's here, never mind. I was going to have you hold on for a second. So in my standalone, this crepe paper open book from Maggie Holmes, it has some frames, it has a ticket, it has a deer head, and some words. So I went ahead, cut the words, and added them to this. Now, I'll show you another instance with this in a minute, but I ended up actually cutting all of these elements, and you'll see what I did with them shortly. So, uh, let's see, I cut the flower and put it here in my area that I keep for leaves and flowers and things. Uh, I, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a section just for that. And so, that's in here, and... Let's see, well, and then I have um, this one, which was from Novi that I just purchased, but I went ahead and, because looking at it just like this, we might not know what all these words are supposed to say, so I went ahead and cut it out, I backed it with the outline, and yeah, so, so that's this box, and there's background stamps here in the back, which are like those. And so, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to go ahead and show you now. I have alphabet dies in this box as well. Um, what I was talking about when I had separated dies, like this instance. This is just a piece, a couple pieces of cardstock glued together with my die cut glued on there. So, my next box is for smaller dies. Now this box, I went ahead and made labels for as well, but this box, I have more thematic because if I wanna look for travel, village, or arrows, because arrows and village scenes all signify travel for me. Um, but I also made a note on here, not to forget that in my big Z die elements, I have these to choose from. So, now I'll show you that in a second. But, so I have the smaller bags here, with the elements in here, which I love. So, let's 
So, and then the next one is food and drink, and that can consist of everything from coffee. And I love this coffee word here just because, you know, it's one word. I don't have any other. To barbecue grill, to the beer mug, to cocoa. And then my labels and frames. So from that Maggie Holmes open book, I went ahead and cut this, glued it onto cardstock, and put it in here. So I remember that I have this because, um, like I mentioned, being tucked away in that spot is not um, somewhere where I'm gonna, you know, flip through and see it all the time. And remember that it's, it's an option for me when I'm trying to audition, you know, elements to use on my pages and my cards and stuff like that. So animals and bugs. So I have my new pudgy die. And then I went and cut the butterfly from that Stampin' Up! set and put it in here so I remember that I have another butterfly element. This is for weather, and I have such things as hearts, clouds, rainbows, and rain-type things, and raindrops, and lightning bolts. And then this is miscellaneous elements, and those would be things like glasses and the mama elephant dainty bow I've got some spellbinders emoji smiling faces some speech bubbles and hashtags and ampersand and stuff like that hearts and stars would be next and those are anything that um you know I can combine together this is another element from Stampin' Up so I cut it put it on cardstock and slipped it in here um this is so nice for me to flip through I even have like a fourth of July this is music, flourish, and holidays. So this is going to have, um, you know, my notes and some pumpkin and St. Patty's Day. And then in the back here, I have the square um, diffusers and the circle diffusers, oval, whatever you want to call them, um, from Tim Holtz. And those are in the back there. Okay, so moving on to the next box. This next box is a box that I have labeled dies with coordinating stamps. And these are all dies that I, you can't really use alone because they don't make sense. Some of them, yes, you can, but most of them you can't. See, this Lawn Fawn, awesome. I suppose I have used this frame alone, but a lot of these elements, you know, you don't know what they are. Um, you know, this is a food, but I wouldn't really be using it without my stamps. So... Uh, uh, the Tim Holtz birds, these elephants. And the only one that's in here that is truly a standalone, although it does have stamps with it, and I remember that I have this, um, are these paper tray ink arrows. Otherwise, these all need stamps to go with them. And so this system works out perfect. I do have these in the back here because realistically, these could be used without the stamps, but they have stamps. And I have marked on the stamp sets um, this as well. I have marked on the stamp sets that there are matching dies. And so I know automatically because that note is on the stamp set that this is where the dies are going to be found. Um, yeah, I have the clip it up, which is where I keep a lot of my stamp sets. And so I can't store like these together with my stamp sets because that would be a lot of weight for my clip it up. And it really isn't meant to hold that heavy those heavy things okay so then the bottom shelf I will pull out oh, give me a second I'm sorry okay so when I showed you on this box here this note for big Z's that's what the bottom tray consists of on my Rascog. These are all the Big Z dies which allow you to cut cardboard and uh, multi layers of cardstock and those types of things. Um, so I have, this is what I have of those. Um, there's not very many but you know they're all here, the labels on them. And so I know also that you know I made the notes here so I know. So there's that. And then I have these Tim Holtz these are his alterations file tabs scallops and brackets and it's hard to see but um, this is the die that I actually used to make the um, dividers for my for my dies um, this one is hard to see but it's like a border so 
There's those. And then I have, oh, I apologize for that noise. Also on this bottom shelf, I have this box. And this box holds all my embosslets and my thinlet dies. I believe that's what these are called. Anyway, um, so this is all I have, but um, this one is for a cupcake. They're really old, they're from Stampin' Up. Uh, I use them, my kids use them, you know, when they're making birthday cards. I just made a layout recently and I used this. And it turns out I only have two of those. I thought I had more, but this one is a flower. So there's these. And then on the side, I have, these are some of those embossing plates, which I didn't really use and never really got into, but I'm pretty sure they were a freebie. This is to make a banner, banner dies. And then this one I have to make tags. So um, I just keep it down there because I don't have any more room in my big, um, in my big box with my dies. So that's it. So I really like this system. I am loving how it's working out. I am gonna bring you over to my stamp, one of my stamp sections to show you also how I am organizing other dies so I can utilize them. So hold on one second. Okay guys, so this is where I keep most of my wood mounted stamps as well as some of my clear mounted stamps, but mostly let's call it Stampin' Up. <laughs> I'm a demonstrator, I've been a demonstrator for a really long time. So I do purge very often, so quite honestly, this isn't that much. I know it might feel like it is, but it's not, if, like I said, 10 years. And these are the ones that I truly love. And if they're retired, I usually I donate them or, you know, see if girlfriends want them that I craft with. So I have them all sectioned out. So these are all the stamps that I have from Stampin' Up! that are alphabets. And I still use them. And then... There's some mini alphabets down there. And then this section here is all family sports related in school. So I even have empty containers with stamps that are wood mounted. Well, actually these are rubber mounted. These are from my friend Chili. Um, but I have those in there too because uh, yeah. So that's all family and stuff like that. This next section is holiday everything but Christmas because I love Christmas and I go a little overboard and then this section here I have it labeled here but I know it's background stamps and also what I have up here are rubber mounted like Hero Arts and Simon Says background stamps so this next section here is uh, flowers bugs outdoor like foresty type things that's in this section here this one is travel and some flowers and home stuff and food. <laughs> I know that's a lot, but you know, I have some popsicles and you know, rainbows and those types of things. Okay, so then this section here are sentiments, and this section here are sentiments as well. But they also have like elements, so you could do this one has a tag punch and if you like what I mentioned you see here I put matching punch it's a matching die I write matching die so here's the section that I wanted to take note of this is an envelope from Staples and it says outdoor woodlands and Christmas and what this is um, I'm guessing most of you have a little bit of confusion when it comes to stamps that you could use for masculine cards, outdoor cards, for like camping and whatnot, but they also can be used for Christmas. So I'm gonna give you some examples of that. So like this Concord and Ninth. Now I do have a friend that uses the system Evernote and there are a lot of people that have done YouTube videos on those, um, but it is, my girlfriend uses it and she swears that she loves it, so it might be something to check out as far as organizing stamps. But you type in the word happy birthday in Evernote and all the stamp sets that have happy birthday come up. But so for instance, this has season greetings, winter wonderland, blah, 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 but deer, trees, those types of things and happy birthday. So that is why it's in here. Because I know at Christmas time I will pull this folder and it'll have 
all the elements that I like to use as Christmas elements as well. And then I've got trees, but um, I live in Michigan and we live in the woods, so I use a lot of tree elements for cards and things and Project Life and whatnot. These are the mountain dyes, which, you know, could be used for anything. This is the pine cones. Um, and then I also have in here one of those cardstock envelopes and I die cut the deer and put it on here and also this car for travel and Christmas tree because I keep this element, it's together, I keep this element with my travel die section in uh, my Rascog. But I want to remember it come Christmas time. And so I have this tree from Paper Tray Ink. This element from Concorda 9th that was like a tree builder, but I use it a lot for these as sprigs behind pine cones and things. And then this one. So this is like an edgelet die. So these all stay in this envelope here. And I know they're there and I keep them tucked in there. So um, they're easy to pull out. And there are other elements in here that don't get me wrong. I could easily use, but they're not really multi-purpose. So, all right. So if you have any questions, gosh, let me know. I'll do my best to answer them. I, um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram at Cut It Up Creations, and I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. Bye guys.